This is the intro jingle. This is the K-pop Daebak show with Eric Nam. Welcome to K-pop Daebak with Eric Nam. This is Eric Nam, and we're gonna have a good time today. We have a lot to talk about. A lot of great secret things coming up. We have stuff from God Seven. We have Davichi. We have Cold. We have uh, messages. We have shoutouts. We have giveaways. We have a lot of surprises. So hang in with us. Welcome to the show. Our handles, our socials are at Tebak Show, D A E B A K Show, on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And of course, we have a curated Spotify and YouTube playlist. Um, this is not a K pop news show. It's just me talking about new releases from the past week. We're back. Welcome back. Thanks for listening to us. Hope you're having a good drive, commute, or studying, or whatever you're doing. Let's just catch up real quick. I'm in studio with Eddie and Diane. Eddie is uh, in town. Brian's actually not here today. He's he's somewhere in the world. We don't really know. He just kind of disappears. How are you, Eddie? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me again. Well, we're glad that you know you're joining us. I thought you'd just been you know really traumatized and you'd never show up again. Um, I wasn't planning on joining this weekend, uh, but I'm here because I, I realized. You realize what? I need to support. You realize that you really love attention. Absolutely not. I'm here to make this Tebok show even better. Right, that's what they all say. Um, what have you been up to this week? I've uh, just been taking meetings. Um, the weather's been beautiful. So it has been beautiful. I'm very excited for your concert tonight. Sold out. Yeah, we have a concert tonight. And we have Soul Jazz Festival tomorrow where I'm just going to go hang out. Yep, I'm going to see uh, Epic High perform. I'm excited. Also looking forward to seeing Katie. Yeah, Katie Kim. performance debut. I'm really excited. Um, Tomorrow's such a good lineup. Like usually, Soul Jazz Festival, I feel like they have a lot of international acts come in, and they have, you know, they have Love, Julia Michaels, Queen Bandit. That's awesome. Right. But this year, I'm actually excited about. And by the way, they call it Soul Jazz Festival. But there's nothing really jazzy about it. Tomorrow's lineup is what, like Katie, Epic High, Chokje, Robbie, Dean, Aloe Black, Aloe Black, um, just you know, a lot of friends that we want to see and hang out with. So I'm super excited for that. So you're headed back to L.A. Yes, on Sunday. So right. Because I love seeing you guys. I'm ready to go back. Why are you trying to ditch us? Ready to see my son and fiance. He has a son. You guys, uh, he has a dog. He calls his son. Not just any dog. His name is Rocky. Does he have a middle name? At Rocky Doug Golden. Yes, that's his Instagram handle. He sends a lot of sassy messages to his uncle. Um, he's very sassy. Uh, but yeah, that's Rocky. And beautiful. And he... He is beautiful. He just sheds a lot, and I can't deal with it. I don't know how you live with that. No, you're talking about your nephew right now. I right? know he and sheds he a lot. he listens to this podcast, so he, I'd be careful. Well, what does he think about it? He doesn't like it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, let's just go ahead and jump into the new releases for this week. This week, we're talking about Tabichi, Got7, and Cold. All right, let's jump into Tabichi. This is the next artist. So Davichi's back with their new song. It's called Unspoken Words. And in Korean, it's called That's like a full out sentence. That took me about 15 seconds to read. My Korean's pretty good. Right. Can you read it for us? Wow. Did you go to Korean school? Right. To you, what I couldn't. My last words. So this song was released May 17th and it's a breakup ballad. It's about, but it's not even about, it's like a medium tempo song. Like I heard this before it released and I was like, dang, you guys are just, what do you guys do? It's like, yeah, it's like super upbeat. And I was like, yeah, it's almost like a dance song, isn't it? Y'all, you're going to bust some moves on stage. Not quite. <laughs> but they, uh, cause they're very, you know, Tabichi has been around probably for 10 years, 10 plus years. And, uh, they are known for just really good ballads korean korean ballads and so when there's like a little bit of a drum and a little bit of a beat going for them it's very adventurous so the song was released about a week ago and it really it's been charting very very well it's at the top of the charts and the music video is beautifully shot it looks just like a movie actually and i, I want to try that concept where i don't have to be in a movie and people could just shoot it and i don't have to work i want to do that for my next one uh yeah we'll take that into consideration but Probably not. We need we need your face. That's what well, sells, baby. That's what that's sells. That's what I hope and thought would sell. But then, like, people have been seeing the social videos for this Daybox show, and they're like, Eric looks, like, awful. He looks like a truck ran over his face, and he just got dragged into the studio. I have a confession to make. What is a confession? I've been flagging those comments so you don't see them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I appreciate that. Yeah. 
I appreciate Whatever. that. Brian's the one posting. Brian just like without consent. It's just like, well, this video is up. What are you gonna do about it? I was like, well, if you could make it look like I didn't get stung by three thousand bees, <laughs> I'd really appreciate it. Like the comments Diane's were so also savage. Been, like filtering. I know, I, but here's possible. the sad part. I still look insane. Honestly, your your skin is great. Okay, it's still glowing. I'm looking at it right now. I think the difference is that you're just very tired. Right. Well, I'm very tired all the time. But the thing is, we also shoot this at like 9 a.m. every morning. But that's why I look insane. But that's okay with me because if you guys are enjoying your audio, if I'm tickling your, your ear canals, then I'm good. Was that a weird comment? You guys just flinched as uh, I said that. That was pretty weird. All right. Next. So Tabichi's back. Uh, they are, you know, they have a lot of ballads. Check their stuff out. And I, I've gotten to know them over the past few years. You're on the same label. And you would think that... Because their balladers are very calm, very uh, what do you say, refined. But they are very uh, they are very refined. They're very elegant. But blah, let me tell you, they can drink. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Mingyong was on TV showing people how to make a delicious somek. So, like Mingyong can drink. She knows how to how to drink, and she's hilarious. But I actually, you know, it's funny. Like they, the great thing about them is they've been working together for like ten plus years. And they're like best friends and people might ask like is this like an image thing that they put on tv and whatever that's not the case you know why because they do everything together i was in japan in march oh so it was like after the australia thing you know i did japan to yeah so i'm back in japan for a day to take meetings and i'm flying back to korea and i see these two girls who look just like tabichi like and i was like they look just like them and we were in the lounge and i and i texted both of them I was like are you in the lounge? They go, wait, was that you? I was like, yes, that's me. Is that you? He's like, yes, it's us. So they were on vacation for like, they just go everywhere together. They do everything together and they're, they're best friends. And so- Eric, let me stop you real quick. What, what do you mean by the lounge? By the airport lounge is oh, what I mean. I'm talking about like the business class lounge, right? that first class life. Is that what you're Listen, I don't ride first class. I ride business class. There's a distinction. And yes, it is a business class lounge. Must be nice. Why are you acting like you've never been in there? <laughs> okay, let's move on. Why are you acting like I, you don't use my stuff and just go in, huh, bro? <laughs> you right, you right. <laughs> um, so the, you know they're they're just good friends and they're they're hilarious. It's funny though, like because I I asked before, like I got closer to them. I was like, oh, like what do you think about my music? Like, and Hedy, who's uh the Omni, she's like, you and I just don't fit musically. To me, straight up, because she loves like ballads and I love pop. She was like, this is great, but it's not my style, <laughs> um, which is fair enough. You know that people have their styles. They have what they love. They've been doing their solo stuff as well. Hedy released a solo album last year. Mingyong released a solo album earlier this year. And I think they're probably preparing for more stuff. Hedy and I recorded a song earlier this year as a duet. And we had to push it off because Mingyong was putting her solo stuff out, which also did very well. And so... I don't know if, if what will happen to that song. Hopefully, we'll get to release it sometime this year, next year. Eric, would you ever, uh, you ever consider being in a duo or a group? If I had to be in a duo, it'd probably be with you. It's not too late. All right. It's not. Are you sure? You want to just give everything up? I would love to split things 50-50 with you. I think it would be like a 70-30 split. I think it should be 50-50. Well, what do you add to the group? Charisma, vocals. Dance. Okay, can you give me a little vocal? No, not here. See, this is why it like this is it is so unprofessional. This Listen, is this is not. Once once we make the contract, then I'll, I'll go all in. But right now, I uh -huh. have everything to lose. <laughs> what would be a good duo to be in an idol group with? If I had to be in a duo with an idol, I think I would be with. Uh... But so here's the thing. Like, okay, I I want to be the focus of the group. So if someone's better than me, then I get like upset. But then if I'm the best of the group, then that means like we're not going to be that great of a team because we're just really capping the talent level. So you know what? We'll do this. I'd rather I'm going to take somebody who's much more talented than I am and I could just really ride the coat coattails up and just kind of coast. Like I could just do the bare minimum, let the other dude do whatever he wants. And I just right, kind of. Right, right, right. That's totally probably like it a, sounds like you and I would be the perfect. <laughs> i'm sitting here listening i'm nodding my head i agree i accept <laughs> do you know who i think is incredibly talented as just like an individual idol but he's in a group is mark of nct i think that kid is like so talented he dances 
he raps he also sings and he's like a good looking dude like he has like the full package so i think uh i would like to just coast on his <laughs> coattails he could do the heavy lifting and i'll just kind of be like yo i'll do like the ad lift and be like yeah whoa, whoa. uh-huh uh-huh and he'll just do everything that'd be great anyways let's move on to the next artist this is the next artist so god seven's back with their new song eclipse off their new mini album their ep is their ninth one it's called spinning top between security and insecurity it was co-written by a bunch of people but of course there is jyp jyp asian soul on the track credits as well as god seven leader jb jb as you guys might know he does a lot of composing and he's very very ambitious as a songwriter he, he's a great dancer and that's his background but he's been really diving into the songwriting over the past few albums all the members they have like great social lives outside of the group of god seven they're great as a group and they perform very well together um while they're on tour and they're doing all their shows around the world um but it's been interesting to get to know them outside of the the image of god seven um like jb and and yu for example i think they ha hang out quite often and jb and i run into each other every once in a while in social settings and he uh super nice dude whenever we meet up it's more talking about music and like the stuff that he's listening to what i'm listening to and what we've been writing he's very very ambitious in that way which is always cool and yu you know i think it's cool because i think it was on that song diga hamyeon I remember that was the first song for me of GOT7 that really was like, ah, oh, this is like a really cool sound. And Yu Gyeom singing got a lot better. And I remember I told him that and he was so happy. He was like, oh, thank you so much. Because <laughs> when you're an idol, and if you're a singer, your singing changes and improves over time. And that uh, happens by doing a lot of live performances and figuring out what that sound is but also recording a lot in the studio because as you, the more you record, the more you figure out what your sound is and how you sound good on a microphone. So if you listen to my, even myself, if you listen to my first song, like Heaven's Door, and you listen to the stuff now, the vocal tone and the de delivery on the song and lyrics is completely different. And so I think it was at that song, at that point, where I was like, yo, you go, your vocals are sounding so much better. And inevitably when you're in a group and you have 10 members or whatever you're fighting for two more words or one more verse or whatever and and so i think from that point on he really increased the number of lines that he got in the song so it's great and the two of them obviously jb yuga released a subunit called just two in february so it's been cool to see them doing that you know jin young has been doing acting i feel like a good bit of acting so it's super great to see these kids who debuted a few years ago um, really grow over the past few years. Needless to say, there's, you know, Jackson, he's doing stuff in China. He's trying to do stuff in the States and doing solo stuff. And um, it's nice also because I feel like Jackson has managed to stay grounded. Uh, it's easy for somebody at his level. Uh, and I say this because China is such a big market and it's easy for people to just kind of get lost in the sauce there and just kind of do their own thing. But all the members are doing well individually, but also as a group. And so it's really great to see them come together again um, for this new EP spinning top. If you guys are an Agase, if you guys are a big GOT7 fan, their world tour starts June 15th in Seoul. And they're going to the US, Mexico, Hong Kong, Europe, Canada, Chile, Philippines, and Australia. Um, and I'm sure maybe they'll add some more cities too. So if you guys can go check out their show, they put on a great one. Also, thank you to JYP and God7 because we have some albums to give away. Yeah, we got signed album from God7. So this is how we're doing this week's giveaway for the brand new Spinning Top EP signed from all seven members. Here it is. Are you ready? Go to our Twitter, right? Follow us at Tebak Show. Then you're going to see this cover art with the song list where it's pretty much the episode about this episode retweet that with a comment and in the comment leave a comment about your favorite song on this album and the hashtag got seven giveaway all right so follow us retweet with a comment your favorite song on this album and hashtag got seven giveaway and we'll be picking winner to send the signed cd to good luck may the best agase win this is the next artist. 
So next up, uh, we're going to do something a little bit different. Up until this point in the podcast, we've been doing three highlights um, of the greatest K-pop releases of the week that we think. I think we want to do something a little bit different and just throw in personal recommendations into the lineup now. So this week, we're going to introduce somebody that you guys may or may not have heard of. You probably heard of him. His name is Cold, C-O-L-D-E, and the song is Your Dog Loves You, and it features Crush. All right, so Cold, he's a R&B artist, soloist. He's also in the duo Off and Off with DJ and producer Zero Channel. Off and Off was signed to what used to be Tableau's label at YG called High Ground. And this is probably one of his biggest songs from 2018. And it's a great love song. It's romantic and it's endearing. And then you realize that the entire song is about his dog. You guys may know Crush also has a dog as well. And his name is, I think, Tuyu. And uh, Crush is a very, very open, big lover of his dog, Tuyu. I guess Cold really loves dogs too. Um, so it was a very, it was a very lyrically fun thing to to listen to. The vibe, it's a very calm coffee shop, easy listening, and the music video is great. It may be the best music video to ever be made because it's just dogs. And that's it. It's it's a very very nice pleasant music video. If you guys want to jump into Cold and you know, want to see what his style is like. Maybe he also did a really, really cool remix cover of BTS's DNA. It's all on YouTube. And um, we maybe we can add it to our YouTube playlist anyways. So you guys have easy access to it. Definitely check him out. He's going to be, I think he might be one of the next big things coming out of Korea as a soloist, you know. Um, there's always, there aren't many, many soloists, I think, that are really making waves internationally these days. Um, but I think he may be the next one. So check his stuff out when it releases this week. Let's go into giveaways. We have a lot of giveaways. We got some announcements. Last week we did Wikimiki and Yuzumu signed CDs to give out. So here are the winners. Drum roll, please. That's a drum roll. From YouTube, the winner is One Cute Pup with a K. One Cute Pup. And from Instagram, Hannah23, H A N N dot A H 23. And the Yusung winner is Amy Macy from YouTube. So, one cube pup, Hannah23, congratulations on your Wiki Mickey sign CDs. And Amy Macy, congratulations on Yusung. Please, 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 please DM us on Twitter or Instagram so we can send these out to you wherever you are in the world. All right. So, again, don't forget about our Got Seven signed album CD giveaway. Also, uh, stuff that you guys can find on our social media, we are giving away signed CDs from The Boys and Kim Dong Han as well. And in the future, we also have stuff coming from PH1 and Epic High. So you guys stay tuned to all of our social media. Stay engaged with us on this podcast and our socials that you guys can all have a chance at winning some cool stuff. And let your friends and neighbors know because, again, the more people we have listening and downloading and streaming and commenting, the more stuff we get to send out to you guys. We really appreciate that you guys leave us comments and ratings on all the stuff and uh, are involved in interacting with us because it really affects the way we write the show and we prep for the show and how we approach other artists to come on to the show. So speaking of that, we have uh, we just did some episodes with Tableau. We have Sam Kim. We have a lot of interviews coming up. So you guys stay tuned. A lot of great content from your favorite artists coming on. A lot of the interviews and the conversations that we have with these people are a lot deeper than, you know, the K-pop Taebak stuff. Um, this stuff, I think, is just a light, easy way for you to get caught up on new releases. These conversations are going to be a lot more in-depth in terms of who they are as people, where they came from, their music, what inspires them, what's hard for them. We're going to talk about everything. And speaking about talk about everything... We have some AMA Ask Me Anything questions submitted from you guys, the listeners. So, let's just jump into it. Crazy Ramblings with Eric Nam. <laughs> Username, Nation underscore Nam on Twitter. All right, here's a question. Do you want to read it to us, Eddie? All right, question one. Pulled from Twitter. Do Korean artists have limits to what type of music they want to produce or write in the K-pop industry? Um, good question. I think it really depends on the artist. Absolutely depends on the artist because it's two-tiered. 
it depends on how far you along you are in your career and if you're in a group or if you're a soloist or not. That's what I think. So if you're further along in your career, obviously you have a lot more say um, about what you can and you want to do. If you're in a group, you're a member of five, seven, nine, ten, eleven people. So I think the the strategy and the thinking there is more than being an individual of I want to make this music, it's what fits the team best. And so I think the teams at that point, they probably come together, they brainstorm together, and they have a collective voice and idea of this is what we want to do for our next album. For soloist, um, because it's just, you know, like in the, my case, I'm one person. I'm singing every single song from beginning to end. I can decide what I want to do. Now, the, when you can, what people can say, like, oh, you don't have really freedom to, to do what you want. I, I, I also see that because I, at the beginning of my career, I'm in a label. I'm in a company where I'm supposed to trust the A&R and the management to say, this is going to work. This is what people are going to listen to. This is what's going to sell. Um, albums or whatever at that point you have to take their guidance and their their suggestions i guess right and i don't think that only applies to the k-pop industry right that's any music industry right eddie you work closely with not only k-pop artists but also a lot of artists in the states and a lot of labels and it's probably the same thing right i'm sure everybody comes in wanting to be an artist with a very specific dream but they have to make concessions they have to make the label happy what's going to make money what's going to recoup their costs and then when they have some success, then they have some creative freedom. Right. And that's, you know, I think that's the other thing. I think, I'm sure some fans understand and some fans may not, but it's putting an album together is not cheap in any way. It's a lot of money, just upfront cash that needs to go into making these music videos. They can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, a song, an album can cost hundreds and thousands of dollars. When every member in the group wants to wear Gucci or Louis Vuitton, right. that is hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it's very, very expensive for people to put this stuff together. And so when you think about putting an album together, it's really an investment into the artist's career um, and building a base so that they can tour and that they can do music that they want. So it applies differently to every artist. So thanks for the question. Next question is from Kyotha. Kyotha. Slat. Betsalat. On Instagram, sorry for butchering your name, but it's a great question. Do you What's ever wish you had a normal life where you can date and go out and have fun without being recognized as Eric Nong? Yes, absolutely. I think it's, especially in the first few years of my life here in Korea, I was like very, very stressed out about it because I like couldn't do anything. Now I think I'm adjusted to a point where I've come to terms that like this is, this is my life and this is my career. There are gives and takes of any career. And this is just part of it. I'm not bothered anymore by like people constantly recognizing me or asking for quest or for photos or autographs. Like I don't mind it, but it did take a lot of adjusting to. And I felt like I was paranoid for a long time because I I would just feel like. And and what you guys may or may not realize is Korea is a very small country and everybody knows everything. And it, Korea has the fastest internet in the world. And so, if you do anything, it's up on the internet somewhere at some point i my way i think subconsciously of dealing with that was just like just be as comfortable as i can wherever i am just not really care about it and if i take that approach then people feel the same way about me um so it's not so much of like oh my gosh that's eric now i'm just like oh yeah he's always like at this cafe just drinking coffee or oh he always just walks around the city with his backpack and he's just taking you know meetings and meeting up with friends everywhere like, I think that is kind of how I approached it and dealt with it so that people, when they do see me, they're not, like, freaked out. And then and then I still get, like, the, what, can I have an autograph and I take a picture? I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Like, I don't really care. I look crazy, but if you're okay with that and you just don't post it, that's, like, usually my thing. It's like, I'll take a picture with you, just please don't post it anywhere because I look like I do in the podcast video. Do I wish I had a normal life? Yeah, sometimes. But at the same time, I, I love my job. I love what I do. And I'm very appreciative. Last one. Here we go. Okay. Hopeful you, Smiles you on Twitter. Hopeful Smiles on Twitter. What groups were you a fan of before you became part of the industry? What are your favorite areas of K-pop directions? Has it gone sound-wise and stylistically? Before I debuted, I was a fan of like Xinhua and Flight to the Sky and Poa. And then like that's like 
I'm in my head for me, that's like first generation. Second generation was like 2 p.m. Wonder Girls, 2 a.m. A lot of JYP artists because I felt like for me, they had a lot of a lot more of an American sound at that time. And I think because they had a lot of Korean Americans in their groups, it was relatable for me. Um, so like I could see people and be like, oh, maybe I could be that person one day or I could like it would have been really cool for me to be in that group or they speak English. So I feel related to them in some way. And I think that's why like JYP, I had like I was always like, oh, that's like such a cool company kind of thing. SM was cool, but like I never really got into like uh, Dongbang Shingi or Super Junior. I feel like during that time when they got big, I was not listening to K-pop. I was listening to like just American pop. Savage Garden. Savage Garden. BB Mac and and uh, Outkast and Ray Charles and whatever. I don't know. Okay. Just random stuff. Yeah, I love Ray Charles. So yeah, I think that era was like. Those were my times growing up. You too. Yeah. I mean, let's let's briefly touch on how different it is to consume K-pop from when we oh, were young. Oh, lord, 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 lord. We used to have to go behind the uh, the barber shop, the Korean right. barber shop, in this like little closet where they ran like a secret operation, and you would have to pay a dollar per VHS rental and for you young kids out there. Uh, VHS is like an actual videotape, not a small one that your parents may still have a car where you put the videotape into. Imagine that times it's 20. It's huge. And so, you mean cassette tape? Cassette tape. Yeah. yeah cassette tape. So this is a VHS. It's like a full out book, the size of it. Right. Um, like a Harry Potter book. I don't know if you guys are consuming Harry Potter through iPads now, but uh, look on Google, type in book, and you'll find what that is. Right. Um, but it was really interesting because we would have to go and rent that and we would see like one episode of Music Bank or I don't even know if Inkigayo existed then. Right? Inkigayo, it's like yeah. Music Bank. They were called different stuff like uh, Music Top 10 or whatever. Like Right. Top 10 people would vote in um, and we would watch these Xinhua videos. And Eric even requested to my dad to buy like a standalone mic so we could both <laughs> perform together um, in the living room, move all the tables and, and do our thing. Do the flip kicks and stuff. Um, yeah. Shinwa was so incredible. And then my interest in K-pop kind of waned, right? Mm. I conformed to American society. And well, you went like weird, like 70s rock. You became like a 90-year-old grandpa. You were like, yeah, ACDC. I was like, what? Like, why? Yo. Def Leppard. I was in middle school trying to find my way. It was, okay. he bought an electric guitar and would play the same riff. A hundred times. Shout out Stairway to Heaven. Can you do that real quick? Bing, 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 bing. And like, and I don't think I ever got better. That's the thing. It I was awful. Hand. I have small hands, right? And Dude, it was really hard for me to reach the string. He had an amp and it would just reverberate throughout the house and it would be the same like eight second loop over and over and he'd never get it right. Yeah. It was awful. Yeah, but I, I you know, it sounds like you're saying that I'm not good at instruments, which is a lie because I was all state. <laughs> I was all state viola. Many people don't know this. But what grade? I was eighth grade. Eighth grade. Eric never what made chair? all state cello. Mm -hmm. It was very good, but I yeah, he's gonna say that cello has a little bit more competition. But who plays the viola, bro? Smart people that know that there's <laughs> nobody playing the viola. So it's a pure statistical game for you. Exactly. Okay, that's fine. As long as you admit that. I'll tell I'm my okay. Kids I was first chair viola. They don't even know the details. But you were not first chair. Not, not first at all chair. state. First year at high school. Yeah, I was first chair middle <laughs> and no high school. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, yeah, you guys have it so much easier to consume K-pop because we have internet and we have YouTube and like, I was, I, we were literally renting like boxes of books and we would like rewind it and replay it and try to get back to the same point over and over and over again. And then we were like illegally downloading like, streams not what do you call it? mp3s mm -hmm. yeah because that was like the only way to get music then Morpheus. i don't even remember but it was just like i was like 12 yeah and like that was the only way to get once it would take an hour to to listen to one song uh well thank you for those questions if you guys have questions go ahead keep sending them to us on our socials we are looking through all this stuff um, you guys can also connect with us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tebak Show. And, of course, we have our Spotify and YouTube playlist. 
please go ahead and if you can please leave us a review on iTunes okay we these uh, really mean a lot to us because uh, they really help in us sh being able to show your artists your favorite artists that people are listening people are listening to what we have to say and what we do and Eddie just flipped me the big middle finger and walked out <laughs> forget you bro um, so thank you um, a few things to wrap up I'm on tour starting next week so uh, I'll be starting off in Lisbon and then to Madrid and uh, just everywhere. Tickets for some of these shows are completely sold out. Some are have some left. So if you guys are in Europe, come to the show. We're going to have a great time. Because I'm on tour, we're figuring out the best way to push out these podcasts. So what we have is we have some interviews coming up. Um, we have a few more interviews that I'm doing before I head off. And I'm going to be trying to keep this K-pop hip hop thing going from the road. So if you guys stay tuned to our socials, probably get to see some of you know my interactions with fans on the road um, in Europe. And uh, it's gonna be an interesting month, month and a half of me on the road. So hopefully you guys stay tuned. We have a lot more stuff coming from you. We have more giveaways coming. Have a great week, have a great night, have a great day, wherever you are, school, work, commute, I don't know. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you guys so much. Have a great one. Goodbye. Outro. Thank you for listening to K-Pop Debug with Eric now.